to have come across this video because you were interested in brown and sharp automatic screw machine. Automatic screw machine is a very large, complicated piece of equipment. Its job is to replicate moves over and over again automatically. You set it and forget it. Now, I mean, obviously you can't just forget it. Someone's entire job to watch the machine and make sure it doesn't screw up as it goes. You get the idea. I myself have two. Let's take a closer look. It's a hot day in Florida. Hot. I'm excited to make this video because while acquiring these machines, I attempted to do a lot of research on YouTube and there is not a lot of videos about these things. There's a handful showing them working, but not much more. This is a way for me to fill the void, fill in the guys that wanna know because I'm going through the process myself right now. If you're new to my videos, my company makes electric mopeds all here in Bradenton, Florida. I can't afford a fancy CNC machine that does what these machines do. These machines are from the 40s. They can do um, incredible work. The difficulty is setting them up. Old beauties are gonna have to be the ones. I also got them for very, very little money. They, they were not, they're not good to go. Neither of them are ready to go. They need a lot of work and I will show you what needs to be done. We got this belt guard here. Behind uh, the guard we have the belt with a pulley on top and a little pulley on the bottom. You notice this machine doesn't have these parts. I pulled it out yesterday. The shaft that comes out of here, I thought the bearing was bad because there was like a lot of play. This was like I thought it was the bearing. It was not. It was the shaft itself. The shaft worn so much that the bearing was just jiggling on it. To get these machines going, I'm gonna fix this shaft and then we can put it back on the machine. Two thousand. That's best we're gonna do. There it is. It's way under spec. Now it's nice and true and round, but it's too small for that bearing to fit. Making a shim would be very hard. Half a millimeter thick, maybe. It would be very difficult to do on the lathe. The solution was and is to find a bearing that is the same outside dimension, but a different inside dimension, preferably bigger in this situation so that I can build a shim that will be easy to make and I stick shim much stronger, and I did that. And I did that off camera. I'm reaming it out to fit on that shaft. Now, the new bearing's coming in tomorrow. I should slip right onto this. It's so next day, I'm back at the shop. I got the bearing in the mail. I half pressed it in. Let's go back to the press. You know, I just wanted to make sure it fit. If, it, if this wasn't fitting nice and snug, then I'd have to like lay down my shim a little bit more so it presses in nice, but it looks like it's gonna be fine. The last thing I want to do before I throw this back on the machine is mess with the keyways. Keyways are a little screwed up where it matters. This keyway was just totally blown out. This one is on its way. So my idea, rotate this, cut a fresh quarter inch keyway in, put in a new key.
Then all the necessary repairs to the shaft. There's nothing else I could do to make it any better. It's gotta go back in the machine now. I've got a couple little, little details, but I'm about to assemble it. This is the section where the shaft goes in. It's gonna go in this hole, go through here, and then there's my bearing. Tap this in, and the whole thing will just That's about all for today. Works, I kind of feel like I gotta tighten that belt, it's a little loose. Objective was accomplished. Task has been at hand. We did something today, that's all that matters. This is Pete from Second Stroke Mopeds saying, don't forget about mopeds. If this is the first time seeing our channel, subscribe, we'll do a lot more of this building the brown and sharps because that's what I'm doing and the videos are about 